Welcome back. This is Chris and my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome. Uh, the date today is uh, November 11th, Year of Our Savior, 2017. Mm -hmm. And the title of this video is The Sword Slash Word of God, uh, uh, Part 4. Yes. The Sword Slash Word of God, Part 4. Mm -hmm. And that is very important because we're battling against principalities and powers of darkness. See, so you have to understand that through gradualism, Lucifer began to gain support by criticizing how the Lord managed the affairs of heaven. Um, he portrayed the God of love as a selfish tyrant. While assuming the guise of godliness, he won many angels over to his side by misrepresenting God's character. He sowed seeds of murmuring, strife, and complaining that sprouted in divisions and eventually rebellion. Um, Satan tried to divide and conquer. He planned to weaken the unity of heaven, thinking this would diminish the power of Almighty God. God responded in Ezekiel 28, 16 through 17 by casting this cherub out of heaven. So a lot of times people think that Lucifer is a fallen angel. Well, that's a way to understand it, but he's a cherub, and he's this cherub being, and that's why the whole thing of worshiping the bull is he's this beast cherub mighty cherub and so as the separation from god the beautiness as 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 decayed and he lost a lot of his power but he's re retained his angelic genius um so lucifer gained the support of one third of the heavenly host and implemented his coup there was war in heaven between god or christ jesus and lucifer and then he was cast down to earth. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast and out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Yes, and guess what? He was cast from heaven down to earth. And that's what's going on right now. A lot of times people talk about ancient aliens. We'll just call it ancient demons, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ancient angels. Ancient angels, yeah. So the origin of lies and false religions began with the serpent. It has been Lucifer's goal to unite the world under a one world government that would reject its creator and worship him. Instead, the very plans that he used in heaven are being implemented on earth. Satan has camouflaged the worship of himself amongst earthly beings through a worldwide worship of God and goddesses and finally through counterfeit systems of Christianity. Yes, that's the mystery of iniquity, ladies and gentlemen. That's 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. That's a hidden lawlessness, ladies and gentlemen. It's a violation of God's law. And that is a mystery, is it not? A mystery of iniquity, mm -hmm. right? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Absolutely. How Second about Thessalonians 2, 7. How about Matthew 7, 2 through 20, uh, chapter 22, verse 23. We like to have two witnesses in the Bible because remember the Bible is the sword or word of God. It is a living word and it's active through faith in Jesus Christ. And we also believe about precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line here a little there. Absolutely. Right out of the word of God. It's interconnected. Mm -hmm. What do we have, Matthew? 7 verses 22 to 23. Oh, 7 22 to 23. Talking about the mystery of iniquity. And guess what? It's already working in the time of Christ. Is that surprising? Not really. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Amen. Ooh. And that's why we have Matthew 15, verse 9, Talking about, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem, ladies and gentlemen. It's a mixture. And then also, Mark 7, verse 8 says, For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. Yeah. And you never, ever want to elevate anything in the front of Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we say, don't elevate traditions of men 
our Greek philosophy above the Word of God. Right, because verse 9 in, in Mark, you just read uh, the uh, verse 7 and 9, says, And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Amen. It's exactly what you were saying. Amen. So that's right there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So these false doctrines of the Greek church, ladies and gentlemen, uh, taking the writings of heretics, all sorts of... Go ahead, my brother. And also, it says in verse 13, it says, "...making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things like ye do." Amen. Amen. So from the holy scriptures and holy tradition, they mix the fiery words of God with the cold breath of the dead and become lukewarm. Um, and that's very dangerous. And that's what we see is this blending of paganism in with Christianity is very, very dangerous. And that's what Satan does with the Luciferian lexicons. He's mixing in the traditions of men, the philosophy of men, the philosophy of Herodotus and all these Greek pagans. Um, and blending it together, which is very, very dangerous. That's the mystery of iniquity. That is lawlessness. That's rebellion against Almighty God. And it also talks about uh, this mark in verse at 820. It says, That which cometh out of the man's which defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceedeth evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, and murders. And all, all evil things come from within that defile the man. Amen. And that's with an evil heart, ladies and gentlemen. That's why our heart needs to be changed. And that's why 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4, um, talks about um, blinding, and this same power blinds man to the truth of God's word. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And whom Amen. the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Well, let's let's use the word, ladies and gentlemen. We have a giant conspiracy or confederacy of Satan to keep man from the truth which is the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the mystery of iniquity, ladies and gentlemen. And it has a worldwide religious system of paganism, and then it's in Christianity today, and it's all this workspace stuff, and people just blindly follow, um, and, and especially today, with attacking God's word. It's been going on for a very, very long time. And that's what we're talking about is let's get away from the tradition and the commandments of man and let's follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's Amen. not perish by lack of knowledge. Let's perish, let's, let's flourish by embracing God's knowledge, his understanding. And by meditating upon his word, by receiving the free gift, by his understanding, by the Holy Spirit coming in, and by living our life by the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, yeah. the preserved word of God. Um, we are prone to, you know, so a lot of times we're just, so that's exciting. Go ahead, my brother. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge to, of the glory of God, in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're talking about understanding, we're talking about maturing as Christians. Remember we were talking about last time about when I was a child, I did childish things, but yep. then I became a man. Um, that was 1 Corinthians 13, 11 and 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20. Um, so we're talking about uh, growing in Christ. Um, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 2, what does that say? I have fed you with he talking about I'm feeding you with milk but not meat because you can't handle the meat because it's too strong. Right? First Corinthians two. First Corinthians three verse two. Three verse two. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither were ye able. Now yet now are ye able. Amen. And that's growth in Christ. What about Hebrews five, twelve through thirteen? Hebrews 5, 12 through 13. Hebrews 5. For when it is time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be your first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. But every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
But strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason have use uh, of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen. Amen. That is so important. Um, and then we have Isaiah, Isaiah 28, verses 9 and 10. So this is about growing in Christ. Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10. Yes. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, <laughs> line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's exactly what you said. Uh, Isaiah 28, verses 9 through 10. That's awesome. Yeah, this is a... So we want to have this delight for the Word of God. Isn't right. that what we want? Yeah, the absolutely. delight in the absolutely. Word of God. So let's talk about delighting in the Word of God. How do you delight yourself? Are you delighted? Is your delights related to the flesh or to the spirit? Well, this is a tough one, right? Just being real, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what about Psalm 1, verse 2? Um, Psalm 1 verse 2. I'm going to read Proverbs 16 verse 16 says, How much better it is to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding. Once again, understanding rather than be chosen than silver. These are things of the Spirit. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And that's upon his preserved word of God. Right. That would probably upon... one, he probably wants you meditating on the King James Bible, of course. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Proverbs 18, verse 2. Because <clears throat> we're talking also about those that are fools do not delight in God's understanding. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Right. And so that's the deal. His heart is far from God. Um, so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about spending time with the Lord. We're talking about what? Meditating upon God's Word, memorizing God's Word. Um, do you think about Scripture verses um, that you've memorized, or um, do you think about other things? I mean, all these things, when I'm talking about these things, I'm challenging myself, too. We all, we, we're students. Like every that. time we have a Bible study, brother, every time we open up, the, the Bible, I learned something. Absolutely. And That's what it's about. So what about Psalm uh, 119, verse 99? We're going to be in Psalms. I love Psalms. Psalms is awesome. Psalm, Psalms One, is awesome. Psalm 119, verse 99. 119, verse 99. Let's see here. That would be right here, which says, I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. Amen. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Amen. And how about Psalm 49, verse 3 and 4? So we can have more understanding than all the teachers by not our own knowledge and our own intellect, but by the knowledge of God. Through his understanding, when he changes our heart and the Holy Spirit comes in, we start spending time with him, we start meditating upon his word, we start um, praying, we start holding up a standard, we start saying, hey, we're going to have this man to reign over us, Luke 19, verse 14. Why don't we do that and say, hey, it's late in the game. We're going to have this man to reign over us. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the authority that we're going to go to. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark, saying upon the harp. I will Amen. open my dark, saying upon the harp. I will incline my ear into a parable? Is that, um, yeah, I will incline my ear into a parable. I will open my dark, saying upon the harp. Okay, all right. So we're talking about meditation in my heart, understanding. Um, this is all about meditating upon God's Word. Um, so the light of God, um, what, you know, giving us more understanding. How about Psalm 107, verse 43? All about the understanding of God's Word. We've been talking about understanding for a while. I had no idea how much there is on understanding right. of God's Word. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, 
Even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Right on. Then we have uh, Psalm 119, verse 100. I'll get that one. Okay. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. So we can know more than the ancients and the teachers and things like that by the word of God. Um, that we have access to it. And that's what God has promised in Hebrews, that even the very young will be able to access God's word. Um, we don't have to go through a priest. Uh, we don't have to learn Latin. We don't have to understand Greek, pagan Greek, or whatever that is. Um, we just need to meditate upon God's word. Psalm 11:10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. And his praise endureth forever. That was actually the next verse I was going to have you read. No way. Yeah. Psalm 110, oh, 111, verse 10. Yeah. Wow, well, Holy Spirit there. Amen. Um, <laughs> and then we have Deuteronomy 4, verse 6 says, Do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. Um, this is what it's all about. It's about meditating upon God's word, relationship with him. Um, so... Have we allowed sin to creep into our life? Go ahead, my brother. Psalm 112, 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Amen. Amen. All right, so how about uh, Jeremiah 4, verse 22? And I'm going to read uh, Daniel 9, verse 13. It says, Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Um, and so that's the deal is I think that when we have sin creeping into our life, we need to continually relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and try to turn because when, when Christ says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it doesn't say, hey, we need to continue on that. It's okay. Yeah, we, we need to welcome can. sin into our church. It's yeah. okay. We've all sinned. No big deal. You know, we just need to hold hands and sing kumbaya. kumbaya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no. It's saying that, <laughs> no, we need to turn. You know, when, when the woman was caught in adultery, did Jesus Christ um, condemn her? No. Uh, remember when he was just, you know, the Pharisees were trying to tempt him and he just leaned down and he was writing in the sand and, and they were convicted themselves, you know. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he looks up and he goes, woman, where are those... Um, those they accuse that, you. Accuse you. Where, where are your accusers? accusers? And she goes, um, they're not they're here, Lord. Lord. Yeah. And he goes, well, um, you know, neither do I. You know, go and continue sin. in sin. No. no, go and sin, sin no, no more. more. And that's what's about repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And mm -hmm. folks, that is easier said than done. So it that's is. why we want a relationship, confess our sins one to another, and we want to confess our faults. Um, uh, confess our sins to God, but confess our, our faults, faults one, one to another. another. For, we, yeah, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. They have none understanding. They are they are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Amen. And that was uh, Jeremiah 4, verse 22. Awesome. Then we have Psalm uh, 32, verse 9. Psalm 32, verse 9. <clears throat> okay. 32 verse 9 yes. says, Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So uh, my question may be, are we open to correction? That's the important thing. Is a lot Good of times, question. Are we open yeah. to correction? And this is to all of us. Um, all, so let's go to Scripture, uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Because the natural man doesn't want authority, a final authority to go to. 2 Timothy 3, 16 All says, Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Amen. So then we also have, so we're talking about reproof, 
See, the scripture is given by inspiration of God, so it's not just by the will of man, and then it's profitable for doctrine. Then that's what we're, we're defending doctrine, God's doctrine, exposing the doctrine of demons. Yeah, absolutely. 2 Timothy 2.10 says, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Amen. And so that's why the scripture is inspired and preserved, and through the preservation is profitable for doctrine, and so for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for righteousness. So it's not this blanket thing where it's just all this emotional thing and that's it. Yes, Jesus loves us. He died on the cross for our sins. But he wants us to repent and sin no more. Right. Like he was talking to the woman. He wants right. us to start moving in the right direction. He wants us to start growing and stop being children. Children, a lot of times, can't rightly divide the Word of God. The simple, the simple pass on. But God wants us to grow into adults in Christ. Right? And so we see that um, 2 Timothy 3.15 says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise in the salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And that's very important to understand. So this correction, um, what well, about... So study to show thyself to prove unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but right? dividing the worth of truth. Now what is the grave warning of when we refuse instruction you know pride cometh before a fall does it not so proverbs yeah. 15 32 proverbs 15 32 um states he that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding and that's where we have the fear of the lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility so you have to have a fear of the lord i mean you have a lot of people that do not fear the word of god um like isaiah 66 verse 5 says you know we fear the word of god it's important to understand that we don't want to we don't want to change god's word or add or delete no thank you folks we also want to make sure that like with titus 1 14 says not giving heed to jewish fables and commandments of men that turn the truth, that turn from the truth, unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled, because they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Right. And that's why the Bible talks about loving the Lord thy God with all their heart, with all their heart, is not saying, oh, I want to love the Lord Jesus, but I also want to, I also like my paganism. Yeah. Um, I also like my star of Moloch. You know, we just need to support these people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that makes no sense to me. Makes no, no sense at all. Um, now, what about those that, um, what about Proverbs 19.25 says, Smite a scorner. And the simple will be aware, and reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. So, when we get reproved, when we, we get, uh, hey, what you're doing is wrong, we need to say, hey, we can, either, we can either respond as a fool, or we can grow from that in Christ, and to continually move forward to mature into Christian adulthood. But exhort one another, not to interrupt, brother. Yeah, Hebrews absolutely. Says, but exhort one another. Um, in 3 verse 13 but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin for we are partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end Amen yeah absolutely so Proverbs 10 verse 13 talks about in the lips of him that hath understanding Wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Yeah. So understand, once again, we're talking about understanding the wisdom, which is the will of God, the Holy Spirit coming in, the Word of God. That is wisdom, meditating upon His Word. Um, so my question is, do you believe you're reading um, the pure and preserved Word of God? That would be my question. 
Do you believe that this is the preserved word of God? Amen. And you know what? Most will say no. Wow. That's sure. the Laodicean church today. Yeah. Um, and that's what happened in Metzger. It's really a tragedy. This was a brilliant man that actually served Satan. He, he tampered with God's word and he led a lot of people to damnation by doubting God's word. How damaging can that be? Uh -huh. If you doubt, yea, hath God said, right? Mm. Are you sure you can't trust the KJB? It's secondhand information. We've got to go back to the originals, according to Madame Blavatsky. I mean, right? I mean, she would know, right? She, she was really smart. She spoke four different languages. She got automatic writing. She had all these demons in her. Yeah. I mean, hey, let's follow the Jesuits. They're really smart. I mean, I, I, they have a lot of degrees. They can speak all these different languages. But they have a great command of the English language. But it's not the wisdom of man and the rudiments of, of man's philosophy, but it's the wisdom of God, right? Amen. So do we believe that we're reading the pure and preserved word of God? Talk about, um, you know, Matthew 16, 8, 9, and 11. What does God say? O ye of little faith, do ye not yet understand how it is that ye do not understand? Through faith we understand 11, Hebrews 11, verse 3. Through faith we we understand. I'm going to read that really quick because that's so important. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were made, were not made of things which do appear. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. That's exciting because in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, Amen. right? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So the Jesus Christ is a starting point of understanding. That's the Word of God. Come to Christ and embrace His Word, accept no satanic uh, substitute. God bless you. Bye.